Well, hey there, everybody. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to my bee yard here in southeast Louisiana. It's been a little bit, folks, since I've made a video, actually. And our uh, last video you seen was a swarm call that I went and got. Always remember, it's not a how-to video. I never, ever set out to do that. Never, ever claim to be an expert beekeeper. Just wanted to make a vlog about my beekeeping so that when I see people at the market and they all go, ooh, I want bees, and they go, wow, I'm gonna get bees, I can say, hey, go check out this channel. I'm gonna show you what it takes. Just an average guy to do bees. It's a lot of work. Even with one or two hives, it's some work. So where are we at in my season? Well, supers are stacked. I think I showed that last time in a walk through the yard. We got plenty of supers on. Towel flow's pretty much over. Gotta watch for robbing. I don't go in my hives that often right now at this point in time because there's really no need to. Uh, all, you, all you check for now for me, all I'm checking for at this time is basically to see if the next super's full or add another super. Well, uh, it didn't work out that way this year and I'll explain that too. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do today is just pop some tops. All I do this time of year is pop some tops and see where we're at as far as honey production. Um, all the supers, supers are stacked. I don't, once I get over two or get two supers on a colony, I don't go in and start breaking them open and going back down in the brood nest. It's done at that point. Now it's just a matter of staying ahead of the spacing. You can see the bees are working, they're still going out a lot of them are just going for water because it's super hot right now we're in the 90s you can still cool off in the shade so it's not bona fide summer but the humidity is here the thick thick humidity and the heat is here and it's uh it's it's getting brutal in the sun uh come june july and august it'll really really pick up and be terribly miserably hot and make you want to quit doing anything outside including beekeeping oh and by the way it is june 12th so we did have a pretty mild spring late spring that was that was nice it wasn't bad but anyway, so I don't go in them because first of all, it's hot and miserable. But second, there's no need to. Uh, you can look at these. This is a good example of a stand and what I'm looking at. You see that first one, for whatever reason, that was the one I did all the different shifts on. And well, I think they swarmed anyway. But you see that one? That's number one, then two, three, and then four. You can see that one's light on activity. And then five. Five was making queens. That's the one that had two virgins and uh I made a nuke off of it and sold it and it's obviously requeened because the bees have done nothing but increase but it was broken down because it, it didn't have that many bees so what I'm gonna look for today is I'm gonna pop the tops and make sure these that I think had overcrowding swarms those two and make sure we've got enough bees populating while they're requeening because if not you can lose a hive or a couple boxes of honey really quick uh, to hive beetles this time of year Another thing, when they swarm, they take a lot of honey and, and suck it down and they get all the nectar out and they get honey out and uncap it and they take off. Gotta see how many boxes of honey are left. See if there's enough bees to guard it. The big tall stacks, I just leave them alone. They're probably full and I'm just letting them dry the honey down because I don't pull now for another two or three weeks. So I don't go in the hives a lot this time of year. So I'll talk a little bit about overcrowding swarms for me. So we have our swarm season. It's pretty much wrapped up. They're not gonna swarm now for the most part as far as a reproductive swarm because it's just too late and the flow is on. And as long as they have space, they'll, they'll grow. Uh, don't have to worry about it. What's different this year is I had way more production hives than I planned on. I usually like about 10 to 15, 18 production hives. And it appears I had probably over, shoot, I probably had over 25. Uh, so overcrowding swarms, what has happened is uh, I've had a few of those and there's two right there and then the re and then there's one other one. The rest are all full. Bees all over the front, supers on them. Um, then about three of the singles look, look a little rough. And here's why. Here's what I did this year. I didn't have enough supers. And what I did, I was actually out of town. I hadn't been to the bees. I was out of town last week. And what I did was I, I tried to get the supers as even as possible across all the all the um, production colonies. And I realized I wasn't going to have enough. 
but I took supers on hives that looked pretty, you know, population wise didn't look great and pulled excess supers off of those and gave to the larger ones and just basically tried to appropriately uh, distribute space um, per the size of the colony. Well, you know, colonies are going to grow in this stuff. The highest time of the nutrition is now. There's so much nutrition out there between pollen and nectar and it just, they left, you know. Uh, if they got overcrowded so I'm seeing I'm seeing uh, what did I say one two and then a third one and I'm seeing two three singles over there that no two singles three ah, something like that a handful that look like they had overcrowding swarms not a big deal want to go in and look at those today that's the situation of overcrowding I'm okay at this point because I don't want I didn't I don't want any more supers to have to handle I didn't want to build a bunch of supers I didn't want to go buy any the bottom line is I have more production hives than I'm used to because I requeen differently this year I used cells my cells and cells I bought and we made production hives fast uh, so it was an adjustment for me and uh, it's just too many production hives so that's a good problem to have hopefully the bees that have swarmed and went out here. Well, I know they have. They've went out here. Hopefully they survive is what I meant. All right, guys. Look, I'm mowing the grass yesterday. And this is a recreation because I just put this back in the grass. But look at that. See that piece of comb right there, right? Piece of brand new, really white. So it's really fresh, new comb. A little bit of nectar. One thing of pollen in it. Some old dirt from being in the grass. I didn't look to see if there's any eggs. I don't have my glasses, but I see this laying in the grass right out here in the grass. Look where I'm at. Okay? Look where I'm at. And I'm like, hmm, where might that have come from? I'm thinking, I haven't done any cutouts, that's for sure. I haven't cut out any swarm boxes because swarm is done as far as any catches or anything like that. I'm thinking, did a maybe a, a varmint, a raccoon, or a possum, or something? skunk did it get in something and pull it out no because i don't run foundation uh you know naturally made it's not out of my top bar what in the world and i'm like wait a minute i'm under a tree hmm are you thinking what i'm thinking well i was thinking it yep that's right that's right i'm hoping i can zoom in because this gopro won't zoom but there's a massive open air colony up there and I'm looking at it. Hopefully the, the video software allow me to zoom in. But it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like seven combs across. It's huge. It's easily a basketball size. And it's up there in that tree way up there so it'll stay it'll be there that'd be a man lift to get up there i've never had an open air colony in my yard that i know of and that's neat it's really neat so how do they come about here's what i've read and what i've heard they okay so swarms will come out of your hives and when they issue out of your hives that colony usually goes up on a tree now there's some debate as to whether the colony is already searching for a home sending field bees and scouts out of the original colony and looking as to or are they do they start that when they're on the tree everything I've read the more I've read says they're looking the minute they know they're gonna start swarming and so they come out with a few places in mind already and they 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 stage near your colonies I mean your your hives in your apiary that's where they stage in that big ball of bees hanging so 95% of the time the ones you find outside your colonies you know your hive stands are going to be from yours um, there's a times I've, I've went through when I had only like 10 or 12 I went through every single one and no swarm cells nothing early on and there's a ball of bees hanging I do think bees come near apiaries but 95% uh, of the time let's just even say 99% of the time they're yours um, you know and we all have to we all have to face that fact uh, no matter how good we try to be but at that point they're searching usually out and about they're looking for places further away I talked to dr. Jeff Harris and asked him that specific question I wanted to know he seemed to go with that although he didn't say for sure but he said yeah bees want to go further away and that's good because that's what you want because your drones when you make Queens your drones only go a quarter of a mile 
or what is it, a half a mile, and the queen will go up to a mile and a half, or maybe it's a quarter and a mile. Anyway, the queen outflies the drones. I got it written down somewhere. But anyway, that she outflies the drones. So you want your swarms a quarter mile away, because that's where they want to go. They don't want to be right here in the same yard. You want them a quarter mile away in your area, so your, your drones are getting further out again and again and again. And that's kind of the whole thing with, I like doing my queens in my yard. But anyway, if they're hanging in that place and they don't decide and have a consensus, come to a consensus on where they're going to go, they'll build right there. They'll go ahead and build right there. And that's probably what happened. As big as that thing is, I'm thinking that's at least three weeks, maybe four. So that's my guess. That's not anything scientific. That was a spring swarm. That was those April swarms, uh, those, those four or five that I that I had that I, uh, um, that came out. So, I mean, unless it's from somewhere else, but chances are it's from mine. And uh, that's pretty neat, pretty neat. All right, we gotta get in some bees. Okay, got Okay, guys. What are we doing out here? Well, kind of as, as I explained, we've got different colonies that uh, they look like that overcrowding swarms. I know I'm a bad beekeeper. Nah, it's really due to lack of uh, lack of supers, like I told you. Basically, what I'm looking for is I'm not too concerned if they're honey bound in their top box because that'll get them through the the dearth. I just want to see if there's enough bees to guard whatever they may have put in the supers before they left in an overcrowding swarm. Usually I have half a dozen supers laying around after I've supered everything up and as I see supers fill I'll stack on top. I don't under super very often. I'm picky about when I under super. I don't like under supering. Uh, I super on top as I go. But this year I ran out so again I leveled them out all out the best I could and we see what we have. Let's look in this one and see what they left me. Uh, and if there's enough bees to guard it. If they don't have enough bees to guard after they've swarmed, and that's the danger is when they don't requeen in the summertime and they take off and swarm on you. Uh, and again, I, I try to watch my honey boundness by just looking in the supers. Again, after two supers are on, I don't go back through it. I look in the next super and see if it's being filled. That's why I don't under super because I don't have to lift. I see them starting to fill the next one up. I got about half of it full. I stack another super on depending on how long the flow is. At this point, the flow's over. So no sense in worrying about it at that point. Halfway through when the flow's over, no sense in worrying about it at that point. You know, let them roll with it. But um, it, it, again, so if I go in and I see they did swarm because they didn't have enough supers to continue stacking, well then I'll move a super over onto a good strong colony to make sure that it gets guarded until I can pull it. Another thing is there's a lot of nectar left in here from uh, the privet flow. We had an extraordinary privet flow. So we had a lot of honey already in there, pulled what I could. Had to leave some that could be another contributing factor to some of these I already was low on supers in the turn around and have supers that were half full as the other flow started yeah not a good combination i accept responsibility but you know what it's gonna be all right we're gonna take care of our bees uh, y'all way up there i'm down here oh let's see if we can get you down here let's see I suspect they swarm. Hey, they may not have swarmed, but let's just see what our numbers look like. So they didn't fill everything up before they swarmed. The yard is just filled with the smell of fresh nectar. I love this time of year when you can smell that. So these are full. Ugh. Capped on one side, not on the other, but, and that's about in there. So they didn't do a whole lot more, but all these are done. We could pull this super really, and being it's, it's probably what we're gonna do. Oh yeah, we'll pull this super. Let's do the shake test. So that's cap, but that's not. So we'll do a shake test. Yep, still nectar coming out, so it's not ready. See that nectar? So basically, one, two three four there's gonna be five frames in this one 
uh, that they got filled before they swarm. So they probably put some down in the brood nest instead of here. And that's okay because the top box will be full. And I do want to take a look at the box underneath. And see where we're at there. Same thing with this one. Basically, the hive is right here. So this thing's full. And capped, it looks like. Pretty much. Not yet. And the next one's capped. These are frames that we, yeah, see, they didn't fill these up. So, these were pulled from the privet flow and they did not refill them. Because I moved the full ones to the outside, if you remember. So, they may have went ahead and swarmed, even though I tried that crazy uh, intervention. So, maybe it didn't work. I just want to see how many bees we got. And we got a good amount of bees. So, I mean, we're okay. They're probably filled up on the top, but I'm guessing the brood nest is packed in the top. So let's let's continue. So this box, it's a bust, really. It's out of the two boxes, we'll make a box and a half. There's the old cells. So that's what happened, guys. They they went back when we first tried to intervene. That little division board confusion intervention I did didn't work it was worth a try but it didn't work and they went ahead and packed the top up so we'll watch them I'm gonna leave them alone so there you go that's what happened on that one uh, looks like they swarmed not long after I did that intervention they never did get over two supers but they also didn't have a lot of bees uh, you know relative to what the strong strong ones had so we left just two supers you can see they didn't finish filling uh the bottom one that wasn't under super which i normally don't do but i knew they needed space and we were trying to keep them from swarming at the time because we caught them midstream uh you know found the queen moved her did the whole confusion thing i should link the video anyway it didn't really work i guess looks like they went ahead and made sales and moved on anyway and they took and filled up the entire top brood box with nectar it's full so that's a honey bound hive that's kind of what you expect when you don't give them but they they also didn't put the honey up in the super all the way so there you go so we may have like i'd say a super and a third off of that will come and the rest of it anything that can't be extracted will just feed back it'll work uh, we'll leave them alone let them requeen and see what happens here's another one we pulled from and this is the other one that looks to have swarmed uh, or at least didn't have bees on the bottom like it had. Let's just say it like that. So they didn't do a lot with this one. They got enough. What we'll do is we'll empty it out and feed it back later. Again, I'm looking to see where they're at and what's in here because what we don't want to do is it's to peak now. So we're peaking out. We're going to get to the small hive beetle season. What we don't want is to introduce a ton of space and put the colony in jeopardy of not being able to guard that space. But let's look here. This super. It's completely full. They filled this and capped this since the last time we were in it. This is some newer foundation. Yeah, there you go. Beautiful stuff. All beautiful honey. See, we're breaking it loose at the bottom. We don't want to do that. So we're going to get it back together. And we know that this one's ready to be pulled. We might be pulling some honey early in stages. And get the space off of them get them reduced since they did swarm it looks like they formed them because what I want to do is reduce them down since the flows over uh, they're gonna have a full box down here guarantee you that's full of nectar that'll be what'll get them through the dearth and bring them on into winter this little queen here this is a queen that came out in the kitchen that time y'all oh yeah full of honey look full 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 and we got beetles coming out too so that's where so we got to be really careful, folks. Yeah, see, it's not quite ready yet. The frames on the inside are still not all the way capped. I don't want to drip this honey outside the hive, but see. So these can wait a couple weeks. Like I said, I usually like to pull at the end of June or mid-July. Oh, yeah. This is all drawn out, new comb. All new comb drawn out and then we got this super so I'm gonna leave them alone 
not even going to go into this tall one now. All right, so we got to pull a few out of that one. Let them cap it. We'll consolidate boxes. We got a full box on that one we can yank out. And then pull that other box off. Give them good compact space. I'm sure there's honey in the second deep. And that's okay. As long as they requeen, they'll be fine because the, the, the flow is over. Clover will start dying out. Nothing will be flowing here pretty soon. And what will happen is that'll be a, that second deep will be a place where that honey can stay until it's wintertime. They won't go through a ton of it in the dearth. And uh, they'll be stored up. It'll be something I don't have to feed. Also something that when it's full like that, what I can do, when I have full deeps on top, I can also move some of these frames around come fall for the ones that don't quite have enough. And again, it'll prevent feeding. Um, I'm not against feeding. It's just, why do it if I don't have to? That's, that's the way I look at it. All right. I'm going to look in this one too because this one... This is the one where we were hoping to make a queen and uh, it's still got a ton of bees, meaning they must have made a queen and continued on rearing brood. Let's look what they put in the super. Full, all the way across. The question is, the cap. Yeah, they're all capped, wow. Wow. That honey down in there. That top brood chamber appears to be kind of light on bees, so it'd be a good good opportunity to pull this off too. Look, the smell of honey in this yard is amazing when you walk out here. You can smell it when you get like 20 feet from the place. So those all look okay, and the swarm ones look like they should look. It's not full, uh, but uh, you, you live with it. Ooh, they're bearding over here. It's hot. So we got some bearding. Now these were uh, single, a single brood management. That was a swarm. That was a little swarm. These are just I'm raising them up, and I'm taking a chance on these to see how they do. Uh, that one, it probably should have more bees. I may have to look in that one. But the one I'm really concerned with, here's my my bearding. Is this one here? This is the one that I thought might swarm on me, and it may have. It's got my Ross rounds on it. Trying them again this year. I've gotten a good year of those and I've gotten a bad year of those. And this might be a bad year because they missed one. Yeah, they didn't touch the Ross round. They must have swarm. So, what I'll do is I'll pull it off and save it. They didn't even start to draw it out. But that one's full. So, I'm going to pull this one out. So this is going to be a harvest. Yeah, I'm going to harvest this one. <clears throat> so, we'll reduce the space. We'll leave the Ross round off. Alright, this super, they drew it out, but they didn't finish filling it. This one's full. This particular colony was taking a chance on it to put something in it. It was somewhat strong. It wasn't doing well. This was a uh, split that just didn't grow that fast. Full of honey. This is a single brood, and this didn't really start out as a single brood. Um, it was a medium that was left on over winter. And I wanted to get it. Oh gosh, that's heavy. I wanted to get it uh, weaned out and let them backfill the brood space. But I'm not so sure they did. They did fill most of it, it looks like. That one's ready to harvest. Again, I, I could have managed some of these better and, you know, uh, just ran out of supers and wasn't going to make any more. Wasn't going to buy any more. Um, more production hives than I planned on. and It's not a bad problem to have. Hey, and anybody that don't requeen, we'll know here soon enough, and we'll combine them and condense down. All right, we got to go to the other side. All right, this is one of the colonies that I did do a little bit of single brood management on because I didn't want to put a doggone deep on them, which I think in the end I will. I'll just get away from this. But it was so late in the season, I was like, man, putting a deep on them now. You know, usually what I do is I'd move... Out of six, six, eight frames of brood, I move half of it to the top, half of it to the bottom, let them have a narrow nest for the winter, feed them up, do whatever. 
I was like, no, let me see if I can capitalize on some honey. Well, this one did all right, but now this is one of the single broods. It's full of honey, every bit of it, all full. Uh, but I'm not so sure. I mean, I know they swarmed. I put an excluder in, they had some brood going in, but I'm sure they swarmed. Uh, just single brood management is something I'd have to get used to. It's too long of a season for us. Uh, I have nowhere to store brood comb once I do pull honey and then have to store the comb the next winter we have nowhere the commercial guys use gigantic containers like 40 foot containers and they put a, a fog in there it's not it's not paramoth it's some other really bad fog it's they use it you wouldn't want to breathe it, it starts with an F or a PH or something they fog it they keep the moths out myself uh, I'm not gonna buy a bunch of paramoth and try and store stacks and stacks of bread I'd have to store 40 something 40 50 brood boxes I ain't doing that it's easier to do it. This is full of honey though. They did good, they filled it. Oh. And this is one, let's see what they did here. These were all new frames and they drew the center. One, two, three, four, five, six. They drew six out of nine and they're not capped. So do they have enough bees? It's not a fully drawn. So we'll pull honey off of this in a couple weeks. Oh, this box is full, just needs to be capped. This thing was exploding, so I said, well, let me put one on. They started filling it. I put the excluder in, put the second one on, and they've done pretty good, but not like my doubles. They did all right. Just wanted to show you one of my singles. All right, guys, so that's it for now. I'm going to end it here. Uh, I'm going to walk next door and do the same thing I just did. I'm basically looking, again, this one and I think two other single brood management deals over there swarmed. I thought one of those had swarmed it didn't turns out it's just full of bees from top to bottom it's full of honey I got to harvest it uh, you weren't on camera for that one it's the one we looked at under the tree and I said ooh looks like it may not have many bees it was fine I mean it could have swarmed but it's got a lot of bees in it and they're guarding the honey I want to see so I know three over there that swarmed from overcrowding not from earlier swarms again I had four or five during the spring um, and at least three from overcrowding and at least three of these singles from overcrowding Again, my fault, didn't have enough supers to go around. The way I do it, once again, is I don't under super a lot of the time. In some cases I do if I know they need space immediately and I've got drawn comb. Uh, but I don't like to under super. I, the way I do my management is out of usually 12 to 17 is my average production colonies each year, which yields what I need. What I'll normally do is I'll, I'll build them up and I'll start to super them. And I usually start with two supers, just so I keep them from swarming. Then as that second super begins to fill, I'll, you know, four or five frames already being filled, not capped or anything, I'll put another super on and I'll stack as high as I go until I know I'm a week from the flow ending, give or take. Uh, this year I couldn't do that. I had way more production colonies than I thought. Uh, and that's because of the way I did queens this year. I put cells in, I made some cells, I bought some cells. It was a good thing, this is a good problem. Um, so I tried to spread the the supers as best I could you know proportionately to what bees I saw unfortunately I've got a couple single broods that didn't draw a super out so I'm gonna pull so far I've seen about three or four supers I've got to pull off that didn't get anything done to them and the Ross round the Ross rounds that one stumped me now that one I, I did think it had swarmed because I didn't see the bees and I went to check it and that one I was disappointed that one swarmed. I did manage that one like I normally do, but for whatever reason, sometimes they don't mess with that Ross round. I don't know if it's all that plastic in there. I've done it two years prior. One was good, you know, where half of them got done, and one, all of them got done one year. Super strong, and I put them on right as the flow was starting instead of ahead of time. So maybe that was it. They were just gangbusters. That was a strong colony. I put it on a week before the flow, and I didn't go in, but I'm guessing their brood nest has got uh, nectar in it, and you know, hey, it is what it is. Uh, you know, it, it, it didn't get drawn, but I have a comb super out there on a super strong colony, so hopefully that one got drawn. Time will tell. But anyway, yeah, so that's why uh, a few super short, and uh, now I'm pulling off empty ones. Too bad I didn't have those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. If we could pull 20 supers, we'd be happy. 20, 25, we'd be happy. Uh, already pulled six so um we're part the way there <laughs> i 
I have a certain amount of honey I need each year that I know gets me through the year for sales. We just drained the last of our honey now and getting ready to put the fresh stuff in the bottle today after I wash it. Anyway, guys, got to do that in a few more colonies. I'm going to make a second video going out to check on that swarm, so that's coming. I'm glad to be kind of back in the hives, but it is miserably hot. Uh, so we don't go into much because of robbing and there's not much else to do to them right now They're probably not going to swarm at this point because this flow is coming down. They're gonna be happy with what they got Hey, look any of those second brood chambers that are full of nectar. That's not the end of the world again I can use that honey elsewhere I can take some of it if I need to or I can leave a lot of it on and they'll have something for winter No need to feed uh, all the single broods will have to get fed, but hey life as it is Thanks for watching if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up I know many of you do don't forget to comment don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Hey, and don't forget to share this video with your friends, family, anybody that just enjoys watching bees. It's Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees in this brutal heat, and it's only going to get worse. It's still good in the shade. You guys have a wonderful afternoon. May Lord God bless you. See y'all later.